So Fred asked me to talk about copywriting, and then he said, you have about 30 minutes to talk. And I thought, that's 13 years of experience and, and testing and learning to put in 30 minutes. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about a few key concepts. I can't get into all of it at one time, uh, but I wrote down some notes. So OK, the power of copywriting, right? What, why copy is important. Now, I'll give you guys a story about it. And how many of you happened to have seen my copywriting workshop last weekend? OK, good. So some of the things I share will be new. The rest of you are not paying attention to me. So um, OK, so I'll tell you what happened. Uh, 13, 15 years ago, I was part of an English class in high school. Now, in high school, I was one of those study my butt off and overachieve type of children. you know. And I would work really hard, and I got accustomed to always getting A's. Now, I worked hard for those, but I was, that was just what I got used to. So then I get enrolled into this advanced placement writing class. And I thought, eh, you know, I always get A's, so I'll be fine. First assignment I submit, D minus. First D minus I ever got in my life. My world f fell around me. You know, parent-teacher conferences began because my dad was super involved in everything that happened in school. Assistant vice principals got involved, and it was nuts. And the teacher basically held her ground. She said, no, he has not written well. There is, it's just not good writing, and so I'm gonna stick to my grade. So I worked really hard, and drove the teacher crazy, got tutoring, was in there during lunchtime, and the best I could ever get from her was a B minus. And my closing grade at the end of that semester was a B minus, first B I ever got. And I was upset, and I went to her and I basically accused her for taking out anger on me. I said, you know, just because I was so hard on you, just because I really made you work for it, you would refuse to give me an A. And she, she was really upset. And I, you know, today I look back, I think she had every right to be. And she looked at me and said, I only give the grade that you deserve. And then she said something that I, I think a teacher should never say to someone, at least not to me. And she said, you'll never be a writer. Please don't ever write for a career. And I really took that and I thought, oh, Wow, okay. So I said, whatever, I don't want to write anyways, so I don't care. So then I go off and I, I, I go to college and a lot of hap stuff happens in between. I try to go study to become a doctor. I switch from that, I go into business school. I start my own business online. So what I did is I published this product called Better GPA. All right, it was about how to study in college. It was the greatest disaster I ever created in my life. It was an amazing product. I couldn't sell three of them over the course of months. But why I say that product was the greatest blessing I ever had was because it forced me to learn. Because in the process of getting that product up and running, I didn't have any money, I was a college kid. And I had to figure out, I mean, back then, there was a program called Microsoft Front Page. You know, rest in peace, I miss that software. It was a horrible software, it created the worst HTML code, but it got a page up. I had to learn, I had to build my page using that. You know, I had to learn how to integrate with ClickBank. And I had to learn how to create a PDF. And the one thing I was forced to do was to write the sales message, right? I had to do copy. So what did I do back then? I went and looked at what other people were doing. I dissected what they were doing. And then I did what I thought was my best. So now it comes time to recruit affiliates. And I end up finding this guy who has a product that targets parents of students. So I get introduced to him from a random contact and I message him and I said, hey, I would love for you to promote for me. You know, could you check out my page, my product? He comes back and he says, I cannot promote for you. I will not promote for you. However, can you tell me a little bit about yourself? All right, here's me, I'm in college, I do this, I do that. Comes back to me and says, you need to learn how to write copy. And I thought, absolutely not, I do not. I want nothing to do with it. And he got on the phone with me, and he made me an offer I couldn't refuse, you know, which would involve me flying down, spending a weekend with a bunch of marketers, learning how to do this skill. And then he said, I'll teach you. You can become my intern. And again, now I'm thinking, I don't really know. This has taken me away. I never wanted a job. I wanted to be in business. He said something to me, which I still remember till this day. Best advice I ever got. Right, one of the best advice I ever got in business. And what he said to me was this. He said, every successful business person needs to know the art of selling through the written word. And back then, it made no sense. I thought, why? You know, who cares? 
Today, I get it. All right, I have sold over $100 million worth of products on the internet, and I would tell you that I would have been able to do only 10% of that if I wasn't good at sales messaging. Right, in the end of the day, guys, you can have an amazing product, okay? You've got the best diffuser, you've got the best, you know, nutritionals, you've got the best everything, but if, what's the point if no one buys it, right? So we grow up in society kind of beginning to believe that selling is bad. Selling is not a good thing. To sell someone is, we have this, this guilt about selling. But I look at it very differently. I think if I believe in my product, if I believe in what I'm doing, if I believe that my product can naturally, genuinely help somebody, why would I not sell it to them? So I heard an example once on stage. Someone said, if you had the cure to cancer, it's in your hands, you know for a fact, it can save lives, it'll cure people, would you not bang down every door? If your friend had cancer and you know, fact, definitive, this will cure their cancer. They just have to touch this stone and it'll cure. Would you not risk upsetting them? Would you not risk banging down their door? You would, because you believe so much in what you have and eventually the results would be there, right? They would get the result that they asked for or that they needed. So I took a very different approach to selling and I began to learn under him. Now, long story short, turns out this person, I didn't know at that time, this person's name is Justin Ford. He is the brother of Michael Masterson. He's his little brother. Now, for those of you who don't know Michael Masterson, he is the number one copywriter to have ever lived. He's sold over a billion dollars worth of products through his copy. Now, he's traditional style, so he used to do all the direct sales letters. He's retired now, but I did know his name in those days, and you couldn't learn copywriting without coming past his name. And here I was with an opportunity to learn from his brother. That meant I had access to him, right? And so that was quite, quite, a, uh, quite a big moment. So I didn't pass it up. Fortunately, I didn't pass it up. I took him up on it. And till this day, I would tell you grammatically, my English is probably still, my written word is still not the best. But it doesn't seem to make a big difference, does it? Right? You can hire editors. You can have people review. But what I'm very good at is articulating the reason why somebody should buy my product. Now I want you to think about what I just said. I'm not good at articulating how great my product is. I'm great at articulating why someone should buy my product. And if you learn to differentiate between those two, it's gonna make a major difference in your life. 